Welcome to this next video on finite differences. Um, by the end of this video, you will be able to derive basic finite difference formulas using Taylor series. Now, in the prior video, we looked at forward differences, backward differences, and then also central differences. And while forward differences and backward differences directly went back to the core definition of the derivative from calculus, using this central difference of an average of these forward and backward differences was a little bit ad hoc. So we would like to have a formal way of deriving these type of formulas and actually estimating their error. And how would we do this? Well, we'll have to use Taylor series to do this. Okay, so for the Taylor series, I'm going to introduce a simplification that all points xi are equally spaced. That means if I have the x-axis here, that there's an equal distance between adjacent points. So the distance between i plus 1, xi plus 1, and xi, so that difference is equal to h. And similarly, the distance between the grid point xi and xi minus 1 is equal to this h and so on. The distance between all adjacent points is equal to h, the distance between neighboring points. So let's look at the Taylor series as a refresher. If I would like to evaluate a function at a point xi plus 1 using only the information at a grid point xi, I can do this using Taylor series, namely that the function value at the neighboring point xi plus 1 is equal to the function value at the grid point xi plus the distance between the two points, which is h, times the first derivative at the grid point xi plus 1 over 2 factorial times h squared times the second derivative of the function at point xi plus 1 over 3 factorial times h cubed times the third derivative of the function at xi plus and so on, right? 1 over 4 factorial h to the power 4 times the fourth derivative of f at the point xi and so on. There is going to be infinitely many terms in this Taylor series to make this an equality. Now, let me introduce Taylor's theorem. So Taylor's theorem says the following that if I start my Taylor series, I still have f at xi plus 1 is equal to f of xi plus, let me keep the next term, h times f prime at xi, let me keep the next term as well, plus the 1 over 2 factorial h square f double prime at xi, and so on and so on. And now if I want to stop this series at a term n, um, I can have the nth term, which is 1 over n factorial times h to the power n times the nth derivative of the function f at the point xi. And now Taylor's theorem says that I can combine all the infinitely many additional terms into just one term, rn, that is to be evaluated at an unknown location, xi. Now, this Rn is basically just the next higher Taylor series term, so the n plus first term, so 1 over n plus 1 factorial times h to the power n plus 1 times the n plus first derivative of f. But this derivative is now not evaluated at xi, but at an unknown location xi. And the only thing that I know from Taylor's theorem is that this location xi is somewhere between xi and the point xi plus 1. But I don't really know where it is specifically. So I will not be able to calculate xi in general, and therefore I will not be able to calculate this Taylor's theorem term exactly. But I know that it has this specific functional form. Okay, so it's only a theoretical expression. Okay, so let's use the first two terms from the Taylor series. So that would be f at xi plus 1 is equal to f of xi plus h times the first derivative of the function f at the grid point xi. And then let me combine all the additional terms, the infinitely many terms that would follow, into a single term using Taylor's theorem. 
and that would be 1 over 2 factorial times h squared times now the second derivative evaluated at an unknown location xi between xi and xi plus 1. Now let me solve this equation for f prime because why? Well, I was interested in calculating the first derivative of f at xi. And here I have an equation for it, so let me solve it for f prime. So I have f prime at xi is equal to, okay, so that's f of xi plus 1 minus f of xi. And then I have to divide by the h that multiplies f prime in the Taylor series, so divided by h. And then I have the Taylor the this Taylor's theorem term, which is this term divided by h. So plus one half h times f double prime evaluated at xi. So if I now truncate this, right, up till now the equation that's written here on the slide is still an exact equality. Now if I throw away Taylor's theorem's term, I will have truncated the series. So if I approximate the derivative by just these first terms there, f of xi plus 1 minus f of xi over h, I will have made an error in this approximation, right? Because I didn't take Taylor's theorem term into account. So this will then account or be the error that I make, and we'll call this the truncation error. Okay, so in this case here, the truncation error is just this Taylor's theorem term minus one half f double prime of xi times h. Now again, we don't know the exact value of this truncation error, right? Since we don't know uh, for one what is f double prime, the second derivative is. Remember, we're trying to calculate the first derivative here, so we don't really know what the second derivative would be in the first place, and we don't know where that location xi is. But there's one important thing that we can glean from this truncation error, namely that if h gets smaller, meaning if the distance between adjacent points gets smaller, then we know that the truncation error will get smaller as well because the truncation error is proportional to that spacing h. So we can ask ourselves, what happens to the truncation error if h is reduced by a factor of 2. Well, if we look at the truncation error here, if we reduce h by a factor of 2, then the truncation error will go down by a factor of 2 as well. And we call these methods order 1 method because they are proportional to h to the power 1. Right? So the order of the method is given to the is equal to the power of h that the truncation error is proportional to. And in this example, that would be proportional to h, so h to the power 1, so this would be an order 1 method or a first order method. And if you recall from a prior video, that's exactly the formula that we had that we called forward differences. But now we also know, by using Taylor series, that the error that we are making when we use forward differences is proportional to h and we have a first order method. Okay, so we did the Taylor series for xi plus 1. Let's do a Taylor series for the neighboring point to the left. So f at xi minus 1 is equal to f of xi. And now we are going into the negative x direction, so it would be minus h times f prime of xi plus 1 over 2 factorial times negative h squared, which is just plus h squared times f double prime at xi, then minus 1 over 3 factorial h cubed times f triple prime, plus 1 over 4 factorial h to the power 4 times the fourth derivative of xi, and so on, infinitely many additional terms. Now let's again use only the first two terms on the right-hand side. And so we have that f at xi is equal to f of, x, x, f of xi minus 1 is equal to f of xi minus h times f prime at xi. And then we combine all the additional infinitely many other terms using Taylor's theorem into a term that is 1 over 2 factorial times h squared times the second derivative 
of f evaluated at a point that is unknown xi. Now let me solve this for f prime at xi. So I get f prime at xi is equal to, move um, the terms over to one side, so f of xi minus f of xi minus 1, divided by the h. And then I have Taylor's theorist term here that I have to divide by h as well. So that is 1 over 2 factorial times h times the second derivative evaluated at an unknown location psi. Okay, so I have this formula here. And if I approximate the derivative just with this first part, I truncate it, I will make an error. And that error, the truncation error, is order 1. It's order h, right? h to the power 1 is the term from Taylor's theorem that I'm cutting away if I just use the first term on the right-hand side. And if you think back to the prior video, that was the backward difference formula. And again, this is an order 1 method. Thank you for watching.